There we go. I got a whole background here. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Clothes left everywhere. I'll do that. I'll just like, sometimes I'll be really good about putting clothes and like, you know, folding them up and putting them away and being like consistent with that. And I used to be great about it and I would feel really good about it. It would be like a thing, like an accomplishment thing, like the whole, I don't know if you've seen that book, like Make Your Bed. I've had a couple of people talk about how like, groundbreaking it is it's like oh it gives you that sense of accomplishment and then you go work out and then you go you know and then you take that and then it's just like you go work out ice bath meditate blah, blah 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 and do all these things to like accomplish things throughout the day but it's like i don't know i'm i'm cool now these days sometimes just having some of that and it's like yeah I'll, I'll fold them up when i fold them up and i'm not gonna get stressed about it because they're sitting there and be like hyper i don't know control freak like everything has to be in its place all the time like there's yeah. other things to focus on <laughs> yeah no i i feel you 100 uh, percent on that i have like uh you see it behind me i have like an open closet it's not it's just some shelves and that's like all my clothes are there and it's just impossible to make it look nice because it's like usually you close it right and that is just then it's like you're you're okay but but this is the, I, I just have to live with it because you know i can't have it nicely tied up there all the time that's just it doesn't make sense actually so yeah and it's interesting how people focus so much on like how the room looks like how it looks and it's like like who's that for like who if it and I get if it looks good to you and you feel good about it, but like half the time, like someone cleans when someone's coming over to their apartment and like th that doesn't guarantee anything. Like the person coming over might have a really dirty apartment and them seeing you have a clean apartment could like make them feel worse about themselves and they'd actually be way more comfortable if they showed up to like a messy apartment, you know? So it's, it's just interesting. Like I've had people close to me who have been like, really intent on oh people are coming over everything's got to be clean and and spotless half the time people don't even notice or give a fuck like what someone's spot looks like and if they do it's like i i don't need that person coming over that often anyway exactly. yeah and I'm, I'm noticing like when i'm i'm also doing the same by the way but when when it, we're like let's say we're out and about and then we're like oh let's go take some wine you know at your place or something like that then i feel it's always like oh my god but it you know it looks horrible in there you know and then you come in and there's like you know maybe there's like a clothing rack and you know a towel that is on the ground on the bathroom you know it's like it's not bad at all it's just it's just we make such a big deal out of it and i always like oh excuse myself about that kind of stuff but yeah. oh yeah i had someone come visit for an ex inspection the other day and it was way worse than it is now and i'm like i i did i was like it's a fucking mess in here and they they're like i don't care we're just we're just checking the spot but we do that like it's almost like uh when you're cooking like sometimes like all i've cooked meals and before anyone tries and i'm like that's ah, you know probably not that great you know probably not that good and it's like why do you do that? like just setting those expectations because it's like fear of judgment it's like i'm just gonna fuck and that's self-judgment pretty much it's like i'm just gonna judge myself before anyone else has the chance to and i've noticed that with uh like with karaoke when i realize that you know i don't think i'm necessarily well, how you are as a singer is kind of irrelevant because everyone's going to hear you differently someone might judge you for not being great someone might hear someone who's singing who isn't as great who might like appreciate that it's like to judge yourself for it's like you're in this unknown spectrum anyway it's like judging yourself is just so so pointless but you know i do remember being in you know more environments where judgment was much more of a common thing and there was like much more fear of it all the time like trying to maintain doing you know what everyone else is doing because people will you know judge make fun poke fun and yeah that was a big part of like high school and college for sure mm -hmm. that was fun yeah yeah for sure just on on the karaoke thing i remember the first time i went down here in town like all alone 
like to this eagle pub uh, karaoke bar uh and i came in and it was like like no offense to the guy on the stage but he was he was just singing his heart out and it, it wasn't like textbook great you know uh, but i loved it and it really helped me uh, actually just sign up and it's just and, and i'm like i don't think i've ever heard anyone down there like doing something like him except exactly when i arrived there the first time so i ju i just find that a little bit fascinating as well but but yeah i uh, it's it's really appreciated and i i think it's yeah it's um it's it is beautiful you know it's it's just diff it's like it's not the standard beautiful you know what i mean but it is beautiful it really is it's beautiful. It's like beautiful to be an unknown and just seeing someone like giving it their all for themselves and like being being your own audience with it too. Like understanding that it's not, you know, there's no there's no guarantee in your performance. So like, and also like trying to do it really well, like that doesn't always feel good. It's like how does it feel to my experience? Like as karaoke is such a great opportunity for that i feel like for being able to tell when it's like you know you're playing it safe you're pushing you're singing for someone else you're singing for yourself you're singing to have fun and like the times where i'm just having fun and not thinking about anything else like the thought of how it's sounding isn't just like isn't as important like it doesn't have to be like it doesn't have to be at the forefront of of how I think about it. But like most of the time I've done karaoke, it's been, that's the first thought is like, how does it sound instead of like, how's my experience? Like how tense am I? Like if I'm fucking tense as shit and nervous and afraid, like probably not going to sound great, but I'm going to focus on the sound. That's like the end output thing instead of like the input of my state of like, where's my invention coming from? How much am I relaxing? How tense am I? How, you know, focused on, what someone else's face is making am i it's like that's all that's all like going into what's being expressed but i'm going to try and control like what's expressed and curate my voice in a way and it's like discounts the it's like the ice or uh like an iceberg it's like looking at the tip and not everything going into it but yeah i guess that would be a better thing to focus on not that it matters one way or the other <laughs> yeah well, I feel the, I kind of feel the same here in, in this yoga class as well. Like, you know, with, uh, for example, the neck thing, I'm like, I can always get like, I feel like we need to move on, you know, but it, it kind of, if things kind of feel nice, I kind of want to stay there. Right. And it's like, oh, but I should move on. You know, in, in this class, I felt I was kind of like, no, it's okay. You know, this is feeling good at the moment, you know, because I can't know what you feel. Right. Uh, but I can I can know what I feel and what feels right for me and that's really all I can do. Everything else is just a story uh, that I've somehow picked up. <laughs> yeah. And like how quick those assumptions, like those stories, can turn into a thing. Like you could assume like, oh, Andrew must be like tired of doing the neck roll thing, and meanwhile I could be loving it and what. And it's like you know we really don't know. Like we're that ourselves being our only audience is such a like such an empowering sort of feeling like i've heard rick rubin talk about that a number of times like he makes art that he likes because like and i don't know exactly what his explanation was but the way i took it was like that's your only guarantee like that's the only response that's the only um person who's looking at it who like is an is sort of close to a known like everything else is unknown and where someone's coming from is unknown so even if even if you know you produce something you do something and like everyone who sees it hates it but like 50 people see it i could just happen to be like the 50 people who hate it and like everyone past that could really like it you know and it's like if a thousand people saw it it would still only be 50 people that hate it but you know, once it hits usually once it hits like two people who hate it and it's like no that's it done with that i'm gonna try again it's like you never know what the next what the next person's gonna come across 
as. And like that not being your focus is also just important when it's just not about them at all. But yeah, like, cause you never know. You never know who's going to come across something or when it's going to hit. There could be a point, you know, you, you work on a project and like it goes dark. And then three years later, like society is more, more open to it. And then all of a sudden it's like, you really just don't know anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. And also I feel like what you, like, I feel what you do also changes very much. Like as soon as you stop caring about other people, because it's funny to see like all these things that I've been doing, like in my life, it's like very much, it is for other, it has been very much for other people, right? And, and as soon as that stops, like I can still feel it for sure. And sometimes I spot it in something I'm doing and I'm like, oh, well, that's interesting, you know, but, but it's like, it's, it, it's changes because you, you, it's like, there's many things I've thought that I've really loved <laughs> and then I just see that it's just, it's kind of the right thing, you know what I mean? And it's, it's, yeah, it, it's not art exactly, but it is similar in terms of would you make that art if if you truly did it for yourself and in the same way would you do like would you do that thing if you truly did it for yourself yeah and uh, i think the answer is very often no uh yeah like if, if you were living on an island like if you were alone would you still would you still do it would you still do it in that way in the way that you're doing it and like that being more and i haven't really thought of that in a while but like being so hyper aware that like that fear of judgment because i've had that you know i remember feeling it so strongly when i was young and just like constantly kind of throughout my life but knowing so clearly that's just like a big fat question mark now like the fear of judgment the future fear of judgment the thought about like what someone else will think like it's assumption like it's a it's a judgmental assumption about someone else when like the person that you're thinking about could actually appreciate it like there's no there's no way of of knowing but like yeah that sense of doing things for other people i mean i throughout social media like everything for a while like every video i made was very much like for what's going to do the best and it was just like you know, learn something, share something, curate it in a way. And it wasn't like, it wasn't authentically, genuinely coming from me. It was like someone else's words, something else that I learned. And that's kind of like how, how anyone starts with things. Like there's processes to everything. And, you know, sometimes someone just starts expressing things as they are. And I guess even when you are, you know, learning something else, someone else's words, it's like, you're still to some degree like translating that through your own experience. Like it's kind of impossible not to, it's just like, yeah, how much are you, yeah. How much are you looking to someone else's words or someone else's guide or like structure, you know, the right way of, of acting like spirituality stuff really gets in, not gets in the way, but can become like a big bottleneck, you know, a big, like, right way of doing things as opposed to like your own way like mm. you on your own figuring it out for yourself because that's freedom that's not the you know obviously not the spirituality shit at all but you can feel you can feel good about yourself that's about it doing that stuff and it's not to say there isn't crossover with things but more the uh spirituality is like outside in of inside out thing mm. that's actually uh, the first uh spiritual thing i ev ever came across that that was called the inside out revolution uh <laughs> pretty, i was like it was just a short youtube video and i was like whoa <laughs> i was just blown away by very like simple mindfulness principles but it was that, yeah it's it's interesting yeah <laughs> yeah like inside that's that's like i i can remember the first couple of times like i came across even 
like reading the power of now it was just like the present moment it was like i didn't even like that and it was obviously very conceptual that like oh you're in in the present moment outside the present moment but i can remember that feeling that sense of like whoa i never even thought that there was something happening right here like everything was always mostly future i would always like project in the future look forward to something or worry about something which is kind of a constant it became worrying about stuff just like stream of hypothetical over hypothetical over hypothetical over hypothetical to like worst case scenario just kind of constantly constantly going through my head and like that that sense of just like always being in your head always focused on something else and then just like at that point you pretty much just use life to like distract from the from the shit storm and in your mind pretty much to like distract from it get rid of it like do other things eating food to get rid of it watching tv to get rid of it playing like doing things that are physical to get rid of it and it's not to say doing things that are physical or bad but like it does take your mind off of that but it was like you had to keep keep doing stuff and then as soon as you settle as soon as you sit and like even starting with meditation like you start to feel a lot i remember i meditated with someone close to me uh that it was the first time they ever did and they just started crying you know like just because that sense of constantly being on the go like becoming aware of how clammy your mind can be when you don't even realize it can be can be kind of jarring i forget because that was like seven or eight years ago I think. But, mm. and, uh, yeah no, I remember also first time meditating. It, it was a nightmare. It was I, I was going to sit for 10 minutes and I felt I sat there forever. And I was, I was kind of for, brute forcing it. You know what I mean? Because it was just so uncomfortable. And I, re- I think first time I, I kind of actually saw the thoughts and how quick it was going. That was kind of a, a silent retreat because then it was kind of like things were slowing down. And then it was just like, you know, it's like, it wasn't even, it was almost, but then that's the first time I was able to kind of see them. You know what I mean? It's like, and hear them before it was just going, I think it was going so fast that I couldn't even see it. It was just chaos, you know? Uh, I'm not sure. This is just the perception I kind of have from them. Uh, But it, it just felt kind of stuck. It was just, I don't know. It was, yeah but it's, it's a while ago as well. Oh yeah. It's like a baseline hum sort of thing. And that's, I think like, um, I was talking with Ray and Amanda the other day about the difference with like your mind kind of being when, when you're sure, or when you, when you feel sure about yourself and like view of the world and have sort of like rigid beliefs, religion, politics, all that stuff, like your mind doesn't go as crazy like the volatility isn't as crazy but it's like more of a prison you know it's like a it's like a low hum sort of background kind of that like like you're saying like not even aware of what they are but just the constant sort of noise and then when you're not holding on to so much structure it can be more like quicksand than a prison like it can be really extreme if you you almost like kind of get caught in something like the the stuff underneath all of that that you are using the structure to kind of protect yourself from wondering about because without the structure then it's like your mind is a open field with like you know any potential possibility like you're a little bit afraid and like a deep deep fear will all of a sudden like be at the forefront of your mind and you're like where the fuck did that come from that wasn't hitting me when i was you know in like 10 years ago but that was still under the surface those fears and concerns but it was like there was a there was a structure in place to keep it sort of like subdued and without that it's like yeah like walking out of the prison but then it's like anything in your head could happen but you're a lot more aware of like what's actually going on in the world like a lot more sensitive obviously a lot more aware and like able to to handle things but you can't really take your mind seriously or else you can you get thought and caught in some crazy thought loops mm-hmm. which i have too, definitely yeah i think yeah i think it makes sense like 
I because I had the I I was in no doubt, you know, about my life before that uh, YouTube video I mentioned before. It was like I was hundred percent certain that I was doing like the right thing, you know. So it's like I feel that's kind of the same as religion, kind of maybe you're like you know this is it. And in the same way, I knew that just working and just getting, you know, that next promotion, it, it was just, I just, there was no doubt in my mind. Yeah, exactly. So everything else was just being uh, pulled down, right? And of course, that's, that's not healthy for, for anything. Uh, and then I was sitting at home, kind of watch, I remember this very clearly, I was watching I have seen everything from that period on like Netflix and all the all these series, right? But it wasn't only that; it was also like some sort of a game on the phone. That was like a combo or eating, you know. So it was always like layers upon layers of distraction, just to, just to keep it at bay, kind of. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Like I thinking back to this, like when I I remember first moving, because like. I kind of had that feeling through like through end of high school into college, like really sure of like, you know, this track. And it was, it was kind of just this constant push in high school to get to the best college that I could. That was just like, that was it. Why? It wasn't to like, so I could get a great job. It was just like, I just want to do it, like work hard enough to like do that just to to be able to and then when i got there is like didn't want to do even the stuff that like most people went to the school for which is like business banking finance uh consulting stuff like that and just kind of like went to the school and it was great but like by the end it was kind of the end almost like felt like the end of that road of the like you know steps towards doing things right or well and then i you know got a job that i liked but it was but then it was like holy shit this is now this is the rest of my life like now there isn't some direction so much anymore and i feel like that's a lot a lot of people get to that point in their you know that space in their 20s where you know they're kind of out of out of the system in a sense or at least the structure of it and have space to like wonder you know if there's if this is really the right way to live like if there's another way to live there's something else and that's i remember thinking like at the end it was my i think my senior year of college and i was like there's got to be a, you know a better way to live like constantly feeling anxious and worried and nervous thinking about the future like there's got to be a better way and then i came across power of now and then got into some like read settle art of not giving a fuck that was the other one that was like 2018 ish and those the two of those were great and like kind of i kind of went through the not giving a fuck in like an aggressive way sort of stage like trying to prove that i don't give a fuck you know like i want to do things to be a person who doesn't give a fuck instead of just like actually not which i'm still like it's funny thinking about how i i was doing that and i guess you get to a point where you kind of you kind of do to some degree but even now it's like it goes back and forth for sure every day it's like i ah, give a fuck about some things don't worry as much about other things but i think the overarching changes you start to notice over time a little bit when it's like oh a new situation you're like wow i used to get really fucking nervous about that like doing the karaoke the other day it's like i'm not as nervous about that but like that was that was over an extended period of time and a lot of karaoke that I haven't really thought about. I guess. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's getting better yeah. for sure. So uh, yeah, but uh, but it's interesting to see that it's still there also from time to time. Uh, it's coming strong sometimes and not strong other times, but it it doesn't matter. Like, yeah, it can just be there, and uh, maybe it affects us a little bit, you know. But it's like. You can still do things, I feel. Uh, in uh, you yeah, you have to get rid of it. That's yeah. that's probably the most helpful. Yeah. Point. All right. All right. Yeah. Good with some uh, mental stretching here. What time do we? Yeah. Oh yeah. Perfect. Perfect timing.
All right. Sweet. Well, Levi, always a pleasure, man. I yeah. uh, look forward to chatting with you again. We'll do some yoga next week. You good for a bit for uh, doing yoga? Like, are you traveling again? You said. I'm I'm coming back Sunday, so I'll be ready again uh, for the Monday or Tuesday or whatever it works. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. So. Uh, Great. Yeah. Awesome. Sweet. Well, I appreciate it. Again, always appreciate the yoga sessions and the time, man. It means a lot. And uh, yeah, look yeah. forward to more Levi with Levi. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can record one tonight uh, before right. I leave. It. So yeah, yeah. was we'll yeah. Sounds great, man. Well, enjoy the birthday party with your cousin, you said, right? Yeah. All right. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. Looking forward to hearing about it, man. All right. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll talk to you soon.